Hello, dear guests. Um, I'm happy to greet you from my native city, Lviv. And uh, today we have a virtual tour. Uh, before we started, let me introduce myself. My name's Ivanka Honak, and uh, I'm representing here a big and uh, progressive family of tour company Vidvidai or Visit Ukraine. Um, so let me share the screen with you and let's begin. Okay, so here we have it. Um, and um, today we'll have a tour over the old part of the city, uh, the one which is uh, proudly belongs to UNESCO's World Heritage. Uh, the place rich on history, on culture, on architecture, and amazing people involved in construction, maintenance, and shaping up the history as well, not only the buildings. So on the photo, you can see the panorama of Lviv and the rectangular bell tower in the very middle of it, uh, that's uh, Lviv City Council. I hope that you have the dreams and wishes to visit the city. So the moment, the time that you're going to visit, you, you already will know that uh, the bell tower of the city council is possible to, to be visited. It's open for tourists. And uh, you can climb up to the very top if you're capable of conquering 300 of wooden steps. Well, let's proceed. And that's the Vidvida company, the one that I'm representing. Here there is the web page and that's the English name. So visit Ukraine and the, the company itself. Well, let's start. The very center of the city, the heart of the old city is its market square. Market square consists of 45 buildings. Number one, it's the city council itself, the one that I mentioned before. And around there's 44 monuments of architecture because practically each building of uh, Lviv old city quarters belongs to uh, historical or architectural heritage. Well, the buildings are kind, looking kind like uh, gingerbread houses. They're small, they're not big, uh, and they belong to different architectural styles. But uh, the one we're proud in particular, it's uh, the Renaissance style, the style which got popular in Lviv in the middle of uh, 1500s. Uh, so there's four sides of the market square and the southern side probably is the most colorful. You can see lots of the houses. Besides that, there is a traditional, one of the traditional symbols of the city, that's Lviv tram or a streetcar. And uh, uh, Lviv trams uh, are part of uh, European history. At the beginning, they were not pulled by electricity. They were horse pulled. So um, the speed of the trams were not that high and the opportunity to open the door manually was um, granting that uh, the person in a hurry could rush for the tram, catch it and jump in. Uh, besides, uh, at the bottom of the photo, you can see the most popular out of four Lviv market square fountains, that's Neptune. In fact, uh, Lviv has no sea and no ocean next to it, but we have something different connected with water. Lviv is located 
on the central European watershed, a watershed which splits Europe for uh, south and north. So from here, from Lviv, rivers are choosing their direction. Some of them go to Baltic Sea, while the others go to Black Sea. So Neptune and the market square itself. Well, number one building. Uh, Lviv City Council um, is the functioning city location. So our city government still works in that building. Our city mayor still is present in that building. And since that's the main location at the bottom of the building over here, I'm pointing with the arrow, you can see two round shaped medallions stating that to live for already more than 20 years is part of UNESCO's heritage. Each city having such a statues has to be unique. Um, and Lviv is unique because through the pace of time, it was built by um, Ukrainians, Armenians, Germans, Poles, Jews, Italians, Greeks, and many more other ethnicities. Um, and together living on a quite a small territory because the uh, area of uh, the old city is 500 meters by 600 meters small because I can't even say big and uh, um, in fact so many different ethnicities living on such a small territory that they turned Lviv into a melting pot of the nations, small and quite intense. And uh, those cultures melted up and mixed into a unique Lviv culture, not only architectural, but uh, the one which is reflected in behavior, in traditions, in language. Lviv is an quite a mix and in cuisine as well. Um, next to the building of the city council, there's barely visible two sculptures. We'll speak in details about them uh, a bit later. Those are symbols of the city. The name Lviv uh, originated from the name of son of the founder of the city, uh, founder of the city, Danilo of Halic, local prince, had a son named Leo, Lev, Lion. So Lviv, from, if translated from Ukrainian, means belongs to Leo, belongs to Lion. Uh, well, uh, let's, let's change the topic for a few local beautiful houses. <laughs> Market Square has few houses that are more popular and more special than the others. Among them, there's Blackstone Mansion. Blackstone Mansion is actually black. It's quite rarely that people paint their houses in a black color. And with uh, this house, the situation was such that it was not at first, it was not intentionally painted black. It was made out of quite porous material, uh, sandstone, and um, considering the chimney heating system all over the old city, the smoke from the chimneys was floating in the air and the uh, sandstone absorbed it. So with the pace of time, got its looks. Uh, the building was um, made in a, and finished in 16th century. It was planned and planned by Italian architects, uh, adorned by Italian sculptors. And um, well, its color made it popular, while the true value of the house is in the ornate, elaborate carvings. You can see them. I'm pointing them with the arrow. These carvings are the true richness of Renaissance style. 
Uh, well, nowadays the place serves as a museum. To the contrary, with another house, which is called Venetian House, uh, this one consists mostly of cafes and restaurants. There is uh, four different restaurants in this place and the photo shows it before the renovation. Venetian house has such a name since in the end of 1500s, this house was built as Venetian consulate in Lviv. So you have to consider that already in the late 1500s, Lviv was such an important trading location within European scale that Venetians considered important and profitable to build their consulate in Lviv. And not just anywhere, but on the very, on the most expensive spot of the city, which is the market square. And uh, uh, there is millions of people of the world uh, wishing to see the lion with wings, which is a beautiful sculpture, beautiful statue on a St. Mark's Square in Venice. In Lviv, we have something quite alike and quite old as well. Above the main entrance gate of the house, there is a... Mm, there is a lion of Saint Mark with a book with the wings. So it's all sorry, it's all here. And um, you can see the lion of Saint Mark not only in Venice, but you can see uh, that sculpture being original in its own way in Lviv as well. Well, um, I was telling you about 44 houses of the market square. And uh, there's something behind those gorgeous Renaissance, Baroque or classical facades. Uh, those are inner courtyards. In fact, Lviv's most historic area is still inhabited by real people. That's something very important and special because quite often when the area becomes becomes popular in a tourist meaning of the word. Uh, quite often, real locals got squeezed out. And in case of Lviv, we still have them living in those original houses and, um, well, showing real life uh, in those original uh, old scenery. Uh, well, let me switch the topic and uh, now I'm ready to tell you about the symbol of the city. Uh, so Lviv um, has many sculptural lions because of the name of the city and they might be both old and young and uh, uh, two are uh, left you can see the photo of the uh, old time house um, decorated with the sculpture of the lion this one is considered quite unusual because that's the lion with one head and two bodies so you can see there's two bodies the lion in the old times was made such to be not only the symbol of the city but symbol of the um, successful family business. Mm. The truth was that uh, inside the building there was a pharmacy uh, which had two owners. The owners were two brothers and that was their idea to pick up lion with two bodies and one head because those brothers uh, were having only good feelings towards each other and they were sharing the same thought. So lion has one head. Besides the old lions, which uh, quantity of which is more than 3,000. So practically every old enough decent house is decorated with at least one lion, but normally a few lions. Besides those old ones, we regularly have uh, 
lion festival in the city when lions um, made of concrete are decorated in certain different ways by the volunteers, by famous people, by the uh, real true artists. And later on, the sculptures are either uh, sold on the charity auctions or gifted to another cities or even in other countries. In here, the line that you can see to the right is the one being a touristy lion showing at his back showing the map of the city with the most special um, buildings well market square it's not the only traditional site of the city and even though that in the old times market square used to be the heart of the city nowadays the center of the modern city is freedom avenue so the main street of lviv is a freedom avenue there were many names changed uh, through the pace of time because every new authorities coming to Lviv uh, were changing um, were changing the name of the main street uh, so uh, um, to make to make it fit to the political ideas to social ideas and so on uh, meanwhile um, Lviv Main Street has one secret. Majority of the cities of Europe, and Lviv is not an exception, were founded on a river. In our case, a river had a name Poltva, and the Poltva is still flowing through the city center. Seven, a bit more than 700 years ago, when city was just about to be started, um, that river became the main reason. But later on, river got really polluted. So in the Austrian time, and uh, Lviv went through few brief periods of different political powers, powers owning the city. Those were Lviv used to be Kievan Rus, Ruthenian or ancient Ukrainian. Then it was Polish, uh, then Austrian. Um, and Austrians brought lots of changes to the scenery of the city. It was the authorities' decision to cover up the river with a concrete manifold with a concrete pipe so river still flows along the main street but in a concrete pipe which the diam diameter is about five meters and thickness of the wall is about one meter um, at the end of uh, freedom avenue there is uh, the most beautiful building of the city at least that's how it is considered by the majority of Lviv. Um, so, Solomia Krushelnitska Opera House, uh, the place um, which, uh, uh, which um, is not only the cultural site, but quite representative city building. And Lviv in many ways might be compared uh, with this city. So let, let me start the comparison. The theater, though the city is more than 700 years old, our theater is not that old. It's about 120 years old. Um, and uh, it's really, really beautiful, adorned with many sculptures and lots of them have special symbolism. For example, those on top, uh, this, uh, these three women um, having wings, so symbolizing geniuses, um, each of them symbolizes a certain field of human interest or a human um, activity. So uh, the angel to the left uh, is the genius of drama. 
in one of the hands of drama there is a dagger a knife a symbol of tragedy while the genius to the right is symbol of music holding lyra there is no symbol of belly because 120 years ago belly was not yet in that big fashion as it is nowadays um, and at the top the outmost tall figure it's a Lviv um, um, main desired uh, ideal sculpture which is glory which is fame so she holds the gilded palm branch speaking of the theater itself it actively represents the variety of different ethnicities once living in Lviv and those are um, well I can name you all of uh, ethnicities involved in the constructions uh, so the money for the theater were given by Austrian Empire while the architect was Polish the building company which won the contest for the um, building for the construction works um, was Ukrainian. The sculptors adorning the theater were Ukrainian, Polish and Armenian. The outer metal works that you can see briefly on the photo and the frames within the wooden doors were made by a local Jewish company and inside metal works were made by a local Czech company and the floors inside if made uh, of marble uh, crisps marble small stones um, or in a terrazzo technique were made by a local Lviv Italian company so uh, Poles Ukrainians Italians Armenians Jews Czechs um, each community did what they knew how to do in the best way and now we still enjoy our most beautiful opera house. Uh, well, besides the secular buildings, uh, Lviv has preserved important uh, um, fortifications and military buildings. Among them, uh, the only survivor of uh, uh, Lviv gunpowder fortifications, which is the gunpowder tower, built in the middle of 1500s. It had enormous thickness of the wall. It was meter and a half. Um, so even uh, if during some uh, fight, during some military activity, some cannonball was stroking the building, there were very low chances that the whole building would be exploding since uh, the walls were very tough. And uh, um, gunpowder tower was made for storage for storage of the gunpowder while the arsenal buildings were made for storage repair and making different arms um, in fact uh, Lviv in the old times uh, in Lviv in the times of polish lithuanian commonwealth it was before austria um, it had an exclusive rights. Lviv was one of four cities of Polish Lithuanian Commonwealth allowed to have two arsenals. So um, there were Krakow, Warsaw, Vilnius, and Lviv allowed to have two arsenals. And since locals were always trying to be a bit forward, a bit more to the front than it is allowed out of two allowed we had three so those official ones were um, municipal arsenal the one to the left uh, built uh, on the effort of on the effort of uh, um, 
community of the city itself and the arsenal to the uh, right way smaller was called royal since the money were given by the king of the commonwealth of Vladislav the fourth um, so to arsenals well speaking of the one to the left it's still a functioning arsenals nowadays it's a museum of military weapons and uh, the arms still are kept in there so built for the arms to be kept it still works to the original purpose it was made for well besides secular and military buildings we have enormous amount of churches uh, that was actually happening because of uh, uh, many different communities and ethnicities living on the territory of the city with the base of time there were many different monk orders coming and settling and eventually everybody tried to build oh sorry try to build a better church than the neighbors had and um well, in front of you uh, is the most Ukrainian church out of those uh, present in the city center. So um, the outer part of uh, Dormition or Assumption Orthodox Church is to our left. So you can see the church itself with the three cupolas. That's the most traditional amount of cupolas for Ukrainian churches, even though that the quantity of the cupolas um, is symbolic in any case. And if it's three, it's in the um, name of God Father, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit. If, let's say, there would be five cupolas, then it would be Jesus Christ and four evangelists and so on. So amount of cupolas speaks for certain sacred things. Next to the, um, next to the church itself, there is a big bell tower, the bell tower of Kornyakt, wealthy Greek merchant living in Lviv in the middle of 1500s and uh, giving a very generous donation for uh, uh, for Orthodox Church of Lviv. Um, the bell tower eventually is the tallest old bell tower of the city um, and that's quite an important thing for Ukrainians since they've started the city but the, for a quite a long time they had no chances to be the leaders of the city and uh, um, and uh, at least they've built the tallest bell tower and inside the courtyard where the entrance of the church is located there is a beautiful small chapel of um, three holy hierarchs uh, and that one is visibly uh, belonging to renaissance times and again having just three cupolas um, well, the interior of uh, Dormition or Assumption Church um, speaks not only of Christianity, it speaks of Ukrainian soul and spirit and tradition. Nowadays, we have many churches in Lviv, ones belonging for some other denominations nowadays belonging to Ukrainian denominations. And... Uh, the most um, the most um, significant traditional and speaking for itself part of the church um, for the tourist if uh, the person's interested to know is the church ukrainian or not is the presence of embroidered towels um, in front of you there is an icon over here and it's wrapped with the towel so embroidery and the icons next to us again right here are decorated with embroidered towels so towel is a traditional ukrainian detail of a church and if you enter a church and you've seen at least 
one super tiny towel, but you've seen one, it means that the church is Ukrainian. So, um, towels. Uh, or Ukrainian word for the towels is rushniki. Uh, and, uh, well, um, there is another in the list of the prominent ones. We have 100 of churches. Each of them is special in its own way. But I'm trying to show you those considered the most important and the most historically uh, valuable places. So in the middle of this photo right here, right here, you can see um, Latin Cathedral. Latin Cathedral, it's number one Catholic Church of the city and number one Catholic Church of the country as well. So um, we're not comparing, competing with Kyiv because we have that major church and so far they don't. We say that Kyiv is the heart of the country while Lviv is the soul and everything spiritual, it concerns the soul for the first place. So Latin Cathedral, another beautiful place and at the same time an encyclopedia on the architectural styles because those long and slim windows and the altar part itself uh, were built in a Gothic style. Later on, uh, the church received its Renaissance chapel, like here and here and over there. Then during Baroque era, the interiors were changed and these little vases were added. And right after Baroque, there was Rococo style and the cupola was made in Rococo style. And Classicism, uh, Art Nouveau and Modern styles are, excuse me, are all shown inside the church. So real encyclopedia. Well, um, the interior of the church you can see right here. It's magnificent and gorgeous. Um, and uh, you can see many sculptural details and the stained glass windows. Actually, Lviv is an amazingly lucky place. Um, having such a heritage considering its stormy history. Location of Lviv in a center of continental Europe made it a desirable place for many different countries. So there were hardly some peace in here for a long-term uh, gaps of time. And um, well, considering all of those wars and conflicts we still have, quite good amount of stained glass windows surviving. Well, another church in our list, it's a former Dominican cathedral. Um, Dominicans were the monks, uh, were the first Catholic monks coming to Lviv. Actually, they came because they were invited by wife of uh, the leader of the region, Prince Leo, um, managing the city in um, 13th century. Uh, so uh, Dominicans uh, received a small uh, site to build their church and with the pace of time they've succeeded and the church was finished and you can see it like right here. Uh, interiors of Dominican Cathedral are shown and um, and uh, well it was really a big challenge for local churches to survive through the Soviet time. Uh, in fact during the Soviet rule many churches in the region were turned into something else. Warehouses, storage places, um, gyms, canteens and so on. Uh, while in in a situation with former Dominican cathedral, uh, people who passionately wished to preserve, to rescue the church, they found great solution to the problem. They turned the church into atheism museum. So 
nothing was destroyed or thrown away. That's a paradox uh, making atheism museum out of a church. But when Soviet Union um, collapsed and the days of communist version of atheism was over, uh, the church went back to its traditions. By the way, this one is also the one where you can see embroidered towels. Um, well, another ethnicity and another church. Um, Lviv gives the opportunity to travel in space and time. And one of the most vivid illustration to this statement is Armenian Dermitian church. So the cupola of the church looks exactly as the cupolas of churches in Armenia. And the age of the church is quite stunning as well. The church, major structure of the church was built in the middle of 1300s, uh, right after um, Armenian true cupola, there was a Renaissance arch added, then it was um, Baroque uh, part of the church added, and then it was Art Deco part of the church added. And uh, speaking of the interiors, they're actually so special and so stunning. The altar part of the church is all covered with Venetian, mosa Venetian glass mosaics. So it's absolutely beautiful. And besides, it is covered with the frescoes and wall paintings of uh, Jan Henrik Rosen, outstanding local artist. Um, well, in here you can see the photo of the cupola of Armenian church. And there's this stained glass window in the middle uh, with the archangels coming to, sherry, to cherish the power of Christ. And uh, that's one unusual detail about those angels. They have colorful feathers. So if anyone on the modern street would be asked what color should be the feathers of the angel, the automatic answer would be definitely white. And in this case, we can see that the feathers are red, orange, um, light yellow and green. So many different colors. Um, and uh, there's another church in front of us. It's the last one not yet refurbished present in the old city, former Jesuit church of St. Peter and Paul. Uh, Jesuits were brilliant if to speak about any arrangements. They were arranging things smoothly and perfectly. Um, it was widely considered that Jesuits were super smart. And in Lviv um, scenery, there's proofs that Jesuits were once very honored and uh, motivated once because they've built the church that you can see on the photo within 20 years on. To the com for the comparison, we can take Latin Cathedral, which was built during 120 years of time. So it's six times slower. Um, though, you know, being smart is good, but being too smart is not really good. Uh, and the times came that Jesuits were all sent away from their church and monastery. So uh, monastery was taken for some other purposes by Austrian authorities, later on turned into giant warehouse of books by Soviet authorities. And another uh, former Catholic church turning into Ukrainian one. It's a former Bernardine church, um, which is uh, uh, which used to be the part of the monastery, but with the pace of time uh, survived only as a church. So monastery does, does not exist anymore. Uh, and uh, here you can see just few of them, not that many, just few. It's like we can count 
I'm counting altars. So one, two, three, and that's so far it. While in a former, uh, former church, um, former Catholic church, there were 16 wooden carved, gilded, unique altars carved. And three of them you have the chance to see, and I hope you'll have a chance to see the other ones while you're visiting Lviv live. Uh, and there's one more thing in the old city. That thing is roofs. So roofs, it's something very special and very about the atmosphere in the city. Uh, Lviv roofs um, mm -hmm. nowadays are actively welcoming tourists. So anyone could buy the ticket and see the panorama of the city. So um, it's here. And some, you know, it's not only the architecture that uh, keeps us up and enjoyed, it's the food as well. And speaking on it, uh, the most traditional thing is uh, in Lviv, if to speak about the drinks, is uh, coffee. And um, we like like coffee so much that there's even coffee festival in the end of um, September every year. So coffee in Lviv uh, is that popular. There is a numerous variety of, of it. Among them, it's a milk coffee, it's coffee with ice creams, it's coffee with different jellies, but the cups are rather small. I'm not sure that um, uh, it might be in a different way. Um, meanwhile, coffee is served in cafes, and cafes, um, cafes, there's many of them in the city, so they have a uh, uh, high competitive spirits and in front of you there is under the blue bottle place where which keeps the memory of Yuri Kulchitsky that's his imaginary portrait it keeps the memory of Yuri Kulchitsky and the name he gave to a real cafe in Vienna some 200 years ago um, so under the blue bottle and uh, locals truly love uh, the sweet life and the um, tasty life as well. So the old part of the city has plenty of uh, pastry houses and chocolate workshops. And uh, here you can see those varieties of uh, homemade chocolate, candies, uh, cookies, uh, um, sirniki, which is local version of a cheesecakes, and just any cakes. Um, well, besides drinking and eating and walking, uh, the one can feel the atmosphere. Um, well, the photo that you can see is part of Fresco Coffee House, um, which is illustrating its name on the walls of the place. During the refurbishment of the uh, place and fitting it up for the coffee place, those, <coughs> sorry, uh, those, uh, frescoes were discovered on the walls and if in churches they had uh, um, angels with wings with some christian symbols mm, in cafes you can see an angel with a popping up bottle of champagne <coughs> well the next things which adds the atmosphere um is Lviv Street Musicians. Uh, Lviv Street Musicians are playing open air and you can hear anything from a folk music through jazz music um, up to high classic music. Um, Lvivids are traditionally uh, big fans of music so um, and they're quite generous and there's many opportunities to hear high quality music, uh, music in Lviv. And um, besides the street musicians, the city is welcoming 
uh, whole list of different musical festivals. I can name you just two of my favorite ones. Uh, that ones are the Class Fest, which is Klezmer's music or uh, traditional ethnic Jewish music. And another number one favorite of mine is Jazz Festival, uh, which happens in normally and usually in the end of June every year. And well, this year we're not having it. It was postponed because of the coronavirus. Uh, and well, let let those times pass by quickly so we could enjoy good music again. Um, well, uh, and uh, our city has something else which is rarely present in the other cities of Europe, at least. Uh, that thing is um, that thing is uh, ghost signs. Ghost signs are old inscriptions made on the walls, on the uh, wooden pieces, on the metal uh, infrastructure of the city, and even on bricks, uh, stating the owners, uh, stating the names and features of the business locations. And here you can see the photo of one among the hundreds of the ghost signs. And you can see some Latin alphabet letters here, but below you can see Yiddish letters as well, proving Lviv be, to be highly multicultural place. Um, with uh, many different secrets and unusual things because reading the ghost signs um, the one could discover real life of the century century ago and even uh, more than century ago uh, so the one could discover what locals were drinking, what stuff they were buying, what technologies they were using. Among the technologies I can may I can mention built-in vacuum cleaning systems, which were popular in Lviv in about 110 years ago. So the ghost signs are telling us the stories about the past of the city itself. Um, and uh, well, our hour is almost over and, uh, um, uh, well, frankly speaking, Lviv is an outstanding and special place that, um, uh, that is a mix of uh, um, many different things. It's a mix of different historical epochs, like uh, over here you can see Baroque fashion of the church, Renaissance fashion of the cupola, uh, classicism fashion of the dwelling houses, and Soviet epoch uh, buildings making a tremendous mix of the old city center. Um, Another special thing is that quite many structures are still functioning to the original aim they were built for, and among them it's uh, the churches themselves. So majority of Lviv old churches are still functioning as churches, and that sometimes locals are even joking that for uh, unofficially about one million of population, we have already 100 of churches, and there's few more under construction, so it's not enough for us. Um, well, with all of the turmoil in the politics, in the social life, in a constant change that life is bringing for us, uh, the God is something stable. And uh, people in the time of change, they need something stable to be for them here. Um, besides churches, those houses of the old quarters, there's still, well, some of them definitely have apartments for rent, while the others, they still uh, have real people living in them and um, 
with the pace of time, those people are changing the history of Lviv because some of them are writers, the others are musicians, the third ones are ethnographers or scientists or researchers. So um, they create a history. So Lviv is not just uh, like using the old time history. Our city is still ongoing in its development and we have this feeling that we're creating the history and we continue doing that and uh, um, uh, well uh, another thing that Lviv is quite a green place even though that the photo in front of you is the winter time here and there and over there you can see the branches of the trees um, Lviv is a place with the oldest public park of Europe, which still is functioning to its original aim. So we have plenty of trees uh, in the city and that grants a comfortable, comfortable atmosphere for any visitor and any of those who live in here. Uh, well, mm, it's our presentation, my presentation is just the way for teasing you up because my true desire is for all of us uh, to have those um, limited uh, times uh, with the restrictions to be over soon. And for all of you who had the chance to see the photos, the traditions of the city, um, on the presentation. Um, uh, so I wish for all of you to have the opportunity to come and visit the city and enjoy the view of that architecture, uh, enjoy the sounds of those musicians, the taste of the coffee and the cuisine, because Lviv is something worth far more than just uh, um, watching on the internet, it's worth visiting and uh, uh, well, it's worth exploring, that's for sure. So um, I wish you all of the best and I hope one day to see you here on the streets of Lviv uh, enjoying the atmosphere. Thank you so much. It was Ivan Nahonak and Vidvida company for you. Bye.